miniature painting stuff that we don't get the fuss about. Don't waste your money on it. It is literally a fad. Opening that pot up and smelling that paint, it nearly made me collapse. Stop kidding yourselves. It's <laughs> awful. That's fine with me. That screams to me, hobby trap. That is a solution looking for a problem. This podcast is brought to you by us. If you're a fan of the show and you want to support us, then you should know that we have dropped some really cool merch on the Siege Studios shop. We've got several shirt designs with this really cool graphic on it, which has loads of cool painting nods and references. I've been wearing mine all of the time for months now, and I genuinely get compliments constantly from people who have absolutely no idea what Warhammer is. The shirts are really nice, high quality cotton, and everything is in stock and dispatched by us. None of that print to order nonsense. So if you want to check out the designs for yourself and see the other merch that we have on the shop, head to the link in this episode's description or go to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. And if you use the code POD10 at checkout, you'll save 10% and you'll get a free sticker pack with your order. Hello everyone and welcome to Paint Perspective episode 60. In this episode, we're going to be talking about things in miniature painting that we just don't get the fuss about. Also in this episode, we're going to be doing our regular segments like listeners comments, our question of the week, and of course our hobby hacks. But first, it's the Paul and Joe crossover episode that nobody asked for. But I you know, can. I reckon people ask for it. Yeah. People have inj- people well, have invested in the I'm going to not cut to the wide at all for this entire episode, purely so that the illusion Just a few can still uh, exist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nice to meet you anyway. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Yeah. Um, I, I, think, I think people, what if this is the most popular episode? What do you do then? Uh, no more James. Let's just, <laughs> no, let's just make a coup right now. Let's just coup this. Thinking just... about it, I know we're joking about it. I can't think of a time where I've like seen you two interact as much yeah. as this. No. Yeah. no, well, we're on different floors, aren't we? That's yeah. it. Um, I, I only sort of interact with Joe via, via text messages. Speech, text Basically, the, the extent of our interaction. And then he says, <laughs> don't do this. It's so either, I... The extent of our interaction is either Paul asking me what job number something is or me <laughs> asking him if we've got part in stock. <laughs> As far as it goes. Oh, ships in the saying, night. Yeah, yeah, I don't know to each other both of those questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we both say to each other, "Ask James." Yeah, ask James. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, you've been painting your Azrak, Paul. I, yes, I think everyone's going to be finally glad to know I've finished the blooming thing. It's been building up for like a few episodes. I won't have to talk to, talk about it anymore. Every episode for the past twelve years, that's what I spoke <laughs> about is Azrak. Okay. Well, uh, we've got the model with us, and then I'll put it on screen for everyone watching. Uh, Joe, do you want to take? Oh, a there look? you go. You've, you've, got, got, you've cut to the wire. Well, no, the it's still it's, no, no, no. It, anything can be doctored. Anything can be doctored. <laughs> this is. I have this model boxed do at you? home because uh, it's too intimidating for me to. It is. Yeah. It's one of those. I don't, why does it feel so different to a normal? Do you think chaos that models thing? that are limited are more intimidating by nature, or you can't yes. go out and get another one? Just yeah. because they say limited edition on them, you think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is very nice. The, uh, the, is the glow, the green glow, is that on the box art of you? It's on the box art and it's on the original paint. Oh, it's on like yeah, the, artwork. the original artwork. Oh, this yeah. is one of those models. This it is, is one of the, yeah. oh, it matches the this artwork. Is, Mark, is it Mark Gibbons? Yeah. I think that's right. This is a good example of that though. This is a good example of it matches the artwork. We've spoke I've before. Tr- I tried. I yeah, tried. We, we've spoke before <laughs> about, about how sometimes matching the artwork can make a model worse. Yeah. But this one is a good one, I think. Because we said on the, the asthma dye one, we felt like it didn't translate too well to actually Not being really, a model. No, or but, even, and then the painting. The but this model. is like... Are you doing, a, what, are you doing an army? No, it, I no? don't paint armies, no. I don't no? Do that. Paul, Paul was like, learn from us and he just paints whatever. I just paint whatever I fancy. That's my... I mean, thing. it's pretty solid. Yeah, it looks great. I, I, oh, you I, already inspected it? I've, I've pre, had a bit, of a bit of a pre-prep for this one. Yeah. What I love about this is I've like been watching Paul's drastic improvements <laughs> over the last like I'd say three or four no, months. Yeah, but Paul yeah, has especially. this thing of like <laughs> but whenever we've got involved with like these challenges or whatever, you know, like the, the when I've never painted one and you you'll you bend the yep. rules a little bit. Mm. And then like whatever. Paul just rock up like couple like he'll have like a couple of days notice or somebody be like yeah i've done a few evenings there it is and we'll all be looking at it like oh it's really good <laughs> and we've got to like we've got to like put it next to it and like we've hardly finished our thing and stuff like that so paul's paul's secretly just improving non-stop i feel like yeah i don't i don't get to paint very often i find so that I hard think, to believe because you paint so much this is what i mean yeah it's so crazy like <laughs> it, it look, may look that way but that's been on the table for several months I'd see. I how did you get? 
how do you stick at one thing for months and months and months? Because I end up because ah, I take well, hmm. I take months and months and months, but I lose interest in that thing during that time, and then I end up not finishing it. Well, actually, I mean, he looks quite intimidating to paint, but I found him quite easy to paint. So what what I did was like, I've seen lots of other people instead of just painting all the armor red in one go, because the recipe was quite simple. I just thought, well, I'll paint the leg tonight. Yeah. And then two days later, I'll paint the other leg. And then I, I found that much more enjoyable rather than trying to get all the armor painted in one, one sitting. So I just did it in yeah. little two or three hour stints. For We've kind of spoke about that before as well, like whether to do that or, or not. Like sometimes you get a quick win if you, oh, let me yeah. just finish a leg. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that I can see what Well, that's it part like. of it as well. That's part of it. It's well. all, for me, it's all down to intent. And whether you're doing that to kid yourself into <laughs> thinking you've done something when you yeah. haven't really, yeah, or whether you are just like, no, I'm just gonna. If you take all the pressure off yourself and you're just doing it, and you know you get there eventually, I think that's yeah. like very valid. Yeah, but, um, I've definitely done it myself, where I've been like, I've almost done it to like boost my own ego. It's like, well, if I get that leg done in the front end, then like a bit of the model's done, and then I've got like something I can post online, and I feel yeah. good about it, and then it will sit in the drawer. Yeah, like, but I, I think as well, partly was. I went into painting that knowing that it was going to take me a long time to finish. Hmm. So with that already in the back of my mind, it didn't matter to me how long it was going to take. And I just did it, like I say, in a couple of hours here and there. Can yeah. I ask, is there something specifically that um, maybe you was expecting to struggle with on it that you didn't or that you learned from? No. Everything that I expected to struggle with, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought what, the, what was the hardest the point to you The struggle was real. The yeah. struggle with, well, I suppose the trim because there's so much gold trim on there and that's quite intimidating, I think. So, but actually, because I, I did like one leg a night or whatever and just focused on that, it, that wasn't so bad. The thing that I really struggled with was the head, the face. Mm. I kept that completely separate from the whole thing. I put the whole model together apart from the head um, and I didn't even undercoat that until I'd finished the main figure. But I really struggled with the head. I just kept overcorrecting mistakes and it ended up like a tennis match of overcorrecting one mistake just to make another mistake so i i tried to correct that one <laughs> yeah. and go too far like, my analogy for that is always it's like you're trying to run a bath and you put like hot water in and yeah, yeah, hot water yeah. In and then you make it too cold and then you make it too <laughs> hot <laughs> yeah in the end i i just thought i've got to stop because this is it'll be you won't be able to see the face it'll just be a blob because there'll be so much paint on <laughs> yeah. there that's the difficulty with faces is i mean obviously you can strip it but there's so the detail in there is so fine. Even yeah. the difference between doing an extra few coats of something or not is mm. often a not a substantial amount of detail. But if you keep, you've only got so many times you can make that mistake and go over it again. Yeah, because there's no you, like deep grooves exactly. or something. No. Where there's you'll like watch really those, defined You'll watch detail. like the the creases in the face just get shallower and shallower and shallower. <laughs> yeah. There's no more crease anymore. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, the, uh, around the eyes, the eyelids. I really struggled with those because it, it, just looking at the model, he kind of looks like he's just got these huge eyes, but actually. He hasn't. There, you know, there's eyelids on there, hmm. and it, after taking a couple of pictures of the face and zooming in, I thought he's got eyelids. Of course, he's got eyelids. Yeah, that's, that's something that I struggled with for so long. Is like any, but like most modern GW sculpts, even a lot of the old ones, the heads. I think the reason people struggle with eyes so much is they don't realize there's like an extra, yeah, like raised area right under the eye, and a lot of people because it's so small, yeah. unless you're using magnifiers, it's quite hard to see. And a lot of people paint that as the eyeball. I, that's why yeah. they end up I massive. Did, yeah. Yeah. It's we get. Obviously, I handle all the client specs that we get for commissions. So I see everyone's requests and yeah. the different things that people are asking for. Some people are really specific. Maybe they've got an uh, existing army that they need things to match. Yeah. Some people are completely open. They're not a painter at all. And they just go, I want it to look like this picture. Do, do that. Do your thing. Yeah, yeah. But some people, um, it's interesting viewing everyone's different understanding of what details are visible and what to ask for and stuff like that because some people will ask for like i want blue eyes hmm. and things like that and it's like i don't even know if you i know some people do it especially on like competition pieces and stuff like that but when hmm. you're painting an army or whatever i don't even know if you necessarily would see that do you I know think, what i mean i think on like high-end competition stuff when you're taking like nice media photography of things and everything yeah. flying up i would argue you can see it but uh, if you show a hundred people a model in person, yeah. I'm talking an especially in an army. Part of an army or yeah. Obviously, if we can do it, we'll do it because that's that's part of the, yeah. the process. But it just make yeah, it just explains like different people's understanding of what details are visible and things like that. Because people that 
when that is more visible, maybe they aren't painting that yeah. little thing that you're that eyelid. Eyelid, yeah. they the think eyelid, that that's yeah. the eye so the yeah. eye is bigger so that yeah. you can see the color more do you know what yeah. i mean yeah, like, yeah. That's what I was like, big green blob in there yeah big... i do feel like it changes from model to model sometimes sometimes those things are a bit more pronounced yeah it definitely yeah. depends on like this like especially like the female models like wouldn't have as much of that and like they're much the male like space marine has got much more like, angular faces and then when you've got like some of the more upscaled characters the details are a bit different anyway mm -hmm. um but it's definitely a thing I don't yeah. think people realize how tiny the actual eye the is. actual eye is. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes I've argued that if you if you're someone who struggles to paint eyes, oftentimes not painting them looks better than painting just an a, imprecise massive eyeball. Stick on a it. wash in. There. Yeah, it's but it's not that. They're so they're so small. You're going to struggle to see it anyway. Like yeah, even, yeah. even when I'm painting a head, I often do the eyes last. And like even when you get up to till that stage, like when you're holding it at like arm's length, it's like you can't. I suppose you can't it, it's a similar thing to like. Not again. It depends what your your uh, aim is. If your aim is to get better at painting eyes, then obviously paint the eyes yeah. and everything that you paint the eye that you do. But like um, we've, I think we've said before. Sometimes with like, I think when we were talking about the every metal style being like uh, how accessible it is, I've, I found I got put off it because I was trying edge highlights and I was awful at them. Hmm. And doing bad edge highlights looks, worse looks way doing. worse than yeah. doing no edge highlights. That's right. Like, yeah, it's similar similar situation. I think there is also that hump that you've got to get over, though. Of like, the only way you're going to get good at them is to practice. Yeah, them. Again, yeah. If the aim is to get better, then practice them on every model. But my, if my aim in that moment was to just get a model finished, yeah, yeah, um, and I wasn't using that model as a way to necessarily get better at painting in that moment, then probably just avoid them. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely something I need to practice more the heads and things. I don't just don't paint enough of them, I suppose. Do you know what? I, I haven't painted it. That's one thing I haven't mm. painted since I got my glasses. Mm. So I'll be head. interested to see. Might do a little, just a little head test to to see if I can paint my paint <laughs> eyes better now that my eyes are better. <laughs> I've done a bit of a U turn on heads because I think I was really obsessed with doing it at one point. And like every marine I painted, I always done as bare heads. I'm like they're just yeah. way cooler. They got way I've more. I heard you specifically say about the your Blood Angels army. That the heads that you you know because you're doing the um, stone guard first, yeah. right? So are, are many of them helmets. I'm, I'm uh, the rule I've made is this is like the recent shift. It, it doesn't actually have anything to do with the fact that I'm doing an army. It was probably a couple of months ago, a couple of months before leading up to it. I sort of had this bit of a switch. Is like I like both for different reasons. I like the head for the like animosity scariness of it. Mm. It's like Darth Vader is scary mm. because it's like. You don't know. There's no. You don't see the guy. Like there's no personality there. Yeah. You can't see any like soul to it. That's why Space Marines can look very, very menacing. But then equally, I love the bare heads because like you look at it and you're like, oh, it's a person. Yeah, like, it's got mm. character. Yeah. So I, I was think... obsessed with doing them for a while, and I've done them like almost for everything. And bare heads. Yeah, bare right, heads. Yeah. Sorry. And uh, now I'm just trying to stick to like sergeants and stuff. It's everything. always one of the main draws to any miniature as well, isn't it? The face. Yeah. It's kind of always. I think like it that. can so, be the helmet though. If, I, if it's done I've right. said this. Before, I think on our worst performing episode, so I'm going to say it again now in the hopes that more people see it. Well, we don't know. This could be the worst performing episode. Yeah, yeah, so true, true. Um, uh, you should always be putting helmets on your space marines. It looks infinitely cooler. Uh, helmets are one of the coolest things about space marines. How do you feel about the Primaris marines versus the old ones, though? Because I, I, I would have, I would have kept cooler. that take if the old helmets the were. The old helmets are cooler. Yeah. Mm. I'm, a, I'm a beaky fan, though. Yeah, I don't like well, the beakies. I like the Mark beakies. Six. Yeah. Mark yeah. Six? Only for certain models. I'm not saying that they should yeah. all be beakies, okay. but um, specifically there is a beaky. There's a classic beaky with the Dark Angels emblem on the beak. Uh, right. Yeah. Solid. That does it for you. Yeah. So good. <laughs> so good. Um, but yeah, helmet. I, I don't mind a bear head if it's like, I like a bear head on a um, maybe like a commander or a chapter yeah. master or something. He's at the back and he's, surveying mm -hmm. and he's stoic and he's looking out then i don't mind it he's taking his helmet off to get a better look that's fine I'd, well, and I'd, it gives him a more sense of personality as well it's like yeah. it makes that guy yeah. uniquely and specifically yeah. that guy not yeah. one of the marines yeah i do, I do well it's, it's a bit weird but the, the only faces i really struggle with is human faces mm. any other faces alien faces orcs uh tyranid heads skaven heads whatever I it, I just almost see them as painting as any other part of the model, but a human face, I always find that is like. I think the that's because the, the barrier is a lot higher because as humans we're 
so good at spotting faces and like drawing them out. It's like the True. first thing you see is like yeah. an infant. And with, humans with are so good like at spotting them. So if they're like, it's that like uncanny thing that you see with like AI and stuff. It's like, yeah. if something's just slightly it's off, it yeah. looks mental. Yeah. But with an alien head, yeah, it doesn't, it's never going like, to look yeah. slightly off. Yeah. That's it. It, it, it looks off anyway. They are off, yeah. aren't they? Because yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of their thing. <laughs> uh, should we do the listeners' comments? Yep. Sure. Uh, Born in Crimson that says, legendary painter Richard Gray. Mm. You can only go so far painting the box art style. Commission painting is boring. And I really don't like painting space marines. James and George, slightly nervous laughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how, how did you feel during this conversation? This is based on the last episode with Rich Gray. Yeah. So obviously, you know going in, I mean, James and Rich are friends anyway. So we know, we know going in, a lot of what he does isn't what you two do. Yeah. So how do you feel in that conversation? Um. I if think he's Rich like, was like very fair with the way he painted because like the whole preface of that conversation was like that's the way he enjoys doing stuff and he doesn't find fun in that for the same reason he said he hates doing commissions and he hates batch painting models and that's why he finds Marines boring whereas I know that James's idea of a perfect day would be painting 150 Space Marines in yeah, one go yeah. so it's kind of that thing isn't it like if you're not aesthetically like drawn to the heavy metal style it's like well obviously you're not going to enjoy it so yeah. I did, equally I, like i i'm massively impressed by rich rich's stuff like it's incredible there's no denying that from me at all obviously yeah. but but it's not necessarily my favorite style aesthetically in a lot of cases and mm. i really love heavy metal style especially in an army but that's just the way i enjoy painting that's the i did enjoy his uh critiquing of the critiquers yes yeah. That, yeah i did get a bit of a little bit shoes of a, on the other foot there yeah, yeah. I thought, mm, i'm enjoying this part <laughs> that was uh definitely my idea while i wasn't in the room i was like yo it's just gonna be you two and rich get him, get him, to, <laughs> get him to uh get him to critique your model i and saw you i saw you left a comment on that episode <laughs> saying like oh i want to do this in the future and i'll be judging but i'm just doing it purely on vibes yeah, yeah. And that was the I'm... best comment of the episode was the reply to that it was like new phone who dis <laughs> <laughs> i yeah i mean a lot of people do say i'm the i'm like the rich gray of vibes I'm as good at vibes. People as, are saying that. that yeah. So wow. I can spot vibes like he can spot a wonky edge highlight. Do you know what I mean? Like, so but like, yeah, I reckon... spot like an edge highlight on fabric. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Shawless Skies says, good old Rich. I found this interview very affirming uh, because I enjoy batch painting. It just goes to show that we all enjoy the hobby in our own way. I'd love to be able to paint to a very high standard like him one day. But I keep in mind that he does it because he loves it and it's not because what miniature painters are supposed to do. Mm. And he says him and army painters like Peachy are all perfectly valid in their own way. That's literally what I was just saying. Yeah, yeah. this this commenter gets it, I would say. That yeah. is the key to enjoying any of this, I think, mm. is understanding exactly what that comment just said. Yeah. Well, it's a hobby, isn't it? Like yeah. The whole point of a hobby is you should be having fun doing it's, it, yeah, not it's validating, like, it? getting validation from everyone else. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, I, I think as well, like, I remember one just t touching on again like Rich's style and, and the way that he does things. I remember one of the first tutorials I saw by Rich um, on his Patreon a while ago now was um, I can't remember what he was painting. It might have been a Dark Angels thing. That's probably why I signed up. <laughs> um, and I remember when he was doing the base coats because he's obviously doing this more realistic, um, you know not necessarily grim dark and i've done that whole conversation already before but more realistic style yeah, volumetric probably what people stuff. would interpret as grim dark yeah yeah uh, you know volumet volumetric highlights and stuff like that um i remember within like the first 10 minutes or something of painting he was just like slapping this paint on and going yeah yeah, I hate um, I hate base coating, so I just kind of try and get this on as quick as possible. Yeah. Like, it doesn't really matter. We'll tidy it up later. And I was like, oh my God, you can just do anything. You can just do anything. You can do that. You just, can just throw do, the paint on. You can just do the bits you like and then yeah. skim on the bits. Against like, the rules. You don't yeah. love that. You just do any of it. What? You just do whatever parts you like. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> Untitled Name says, uh, in scale modeling, we call the pile of shame the stash. The negative sentiment towards mm. uncompleted projects isn't nearly as prevalent there. That's true. Yeah. I wonder if more. I wonder if the scale model world leans more into understanding the whole collectible thing that you're talking about a lot of the time. Yeah, that's perhaps it. I'm always mm. like continuously baffled at how little crossover there are between the scale. Like we're on parallel lines. Like the scale bundling community and the Warhammer community 
are like on paper the same group of people. Mm. And I know that there are some, I understand that there are some people that do both yeah. come from one or the other. But it does seem that by and large, it's like you've got your paints, we've got our paints, you've got your little products, we've got That's our it, little yeah. products. Just it's definitely a line. Yeah. It's definitely a line. And it does feel like it. It's like there's a fence. We're sort of peeking at each other over the top. Yeah. Do you reckon... Yeah. The... I don't talk to my brother because he makes cameos <laughs> anymore. Um, do you reckon that every metal style of Games Workshop is in part what calls that? Well, the, if, I, if I understand the scale modeling thing, and I don't, it's entirely about realism, yes. right? And it's making things look like real life. So maybe it's yeah, irrelevant of like on... painting quality and who's the yeah. best painter. It's what looks the most like real life. Yeah, that's it's yeah. judged it's in a different way, right? Yeah, we're, whereas Warhammer is exaggeration. Yeah, mm. of an object rather than the realism of the object. Yeah, you want when you're doing a, a Tamiya kit or, an, or whatever you're, you're painting, you want it to look as real as possible because that's what you're you're trying to emulate. It's probably because you? they're drawing from real life reference. Of like course, yeah. it's all stuff that exists. Yeah, whereas actually, the Warhammer stuff is yeah. all completely made up and based on artwork and fictional books, right? Yeah, yeah fictional I guess, facts. I mean, we've seen many examples where you can translate real stuff into that, though. And I think having Astra Militarum as an army at least gives them that probably annoys them more actually because the scale's like completely <laughs> yeah. off like they're right. looking it's at it that's ridiculous bit, yeah. yeah it's a little bit bigger yeah it's, have you ever seen um, in, like artist interpretations and stuff of like true scale uh, I mean like 3D models are often the 3D print and stuff like a true scale like Space Marine look very odd mm. like uh, not because they are odd but because you're just so used to seeing the upscaled features like the big hands the big head yeah. and stuff um, but it's like, you know, when you go to like events and they've got like the life size, um, like Terminator mm. and you look at it and you're like, but it doesn't look like a model. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm. like slightly more slender, like the proportions are slightly. Yeah. Different. I think that might be like, I mean, cause I view it more when I'm thinking of a space Marine or I'm looking at a space Marine model yeah. or something like that. I view it more. I almost think of it more as like an animated character or or a comic or something like the, mm. the the scale and the proportions are to me supposed to be a little bit off because it's supposed to be this exaggerated yeah you know, like you were saying so yeah maybe it's just different. But obviously it does like the re my understanding is that the reason they like that is not for that reason it's to make them possible to paint and easier to paint yeah more accessible, right so. yeah but i just think that's what i'm saying i think it lends itself to oh, how yeah, i would imagine mm. the space marine anyway. yeah yeah uh, Winter Nine says, <laughs> uh, background trash TV surely has to be Towie keeping it on brand. <laughs> Good Joe, Lord. you're being called out for your <laughs> bad taste in trash TV. <laughs> no, look, Towie, Towie had a good run for a couple of seasons. Like 15 first. years ago. No, yeah, like for the yeah. first few seasons and stuff like that. Um, Towie's a bit too close to home for me, yeah. I think. Um, not only within Essex, I, I live I live particularly. Are they in Brentwood? Yeah, uh, it, it was, was Brentwood, it, it was originally based around Brentwood. Yeah, that's not far was, from here, a, is it? There was a uh? not, it's not really. far from here, is it? Not really, no, 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 no. And that the the um, Sugar Hut was the that's yeah, the, I can't yeah, believe yeah. I mentioned Sugar Hut. The <laughs> that was the club, but that's in Brentwood. Yeah, so that right. was like the club where a lot of it was. Was Have you been? Based. I've never been to Sugar Hut. No, I don't think it's there anymore. Uh -huh. um, but R yeah, Tawi, 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 a little bit, ago. little bit too close to home. I want some escapism. Yeah. Um, I want to hear some, you know, different accents. Yeah. Um, That's not even they're in Tawi. It's not even an Essex accent. I've never met anyone in real life that no, sounds like those people. I, I just want to. I just want to. Got these people from. just to, to say how close to home this is. Mm. I went to school. <laughs> Good lord. With. Um, not that I knew him because he's he's older, but the the gentleman who actually came up with the idea for Towie yeah, was a, is a former Big Brother winner. Oh right, uh, called Brian. Okay, and he went to my school. He actually, I think, I believe he got scammed out of the idea for Towie by ITV, and it was a whole thing. But he was never on Towie. Right. But that's how close to home it is. Uh, so I prefer a bit of escapism. So at least Love Island and <laughs> things like that is <laughs> no, a little Love bit, Island. little bit further away. Was, was there nanny? Was nanny Pat? In Nanny Tower. Pat was was OG Towie, yeah. Because, aha, uh -huh, right, this is my little claim. R.I.P. To paint. Nanny Pat, I believe. I'm sorry yeah, to all the American die, viewers yeah. right now. She, no, I think Americans <laughs> Americans are actually I think they've seen well it, yeah. on it, yeah. That's actually more my speed watching the American ones because that's so far removed yeah, from reality yeah. to me. But I did see Nanny Pat in Tesco's once. Oh, there you go. <laughs> see, see what I mean? Like, <laughs> if I want escapism, I can't be bumping into no, them in Tesco. Not in the Tesco's. And it was hilarious because... Everybody in Tesco is like yelling at her from a, oh, it's Nanny Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Bless her.
Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, that to answer your question, a um, little bit too, little bit no, too close to home. Absolutely not. Well, uh, if anyone's got any, uh, if you're like one of the listeners in like Australia or something, uh, or, Married, or married at first or, sight, Australia. That's a good one. Yeah, that's quite a big one, isn't it? Yeah. I've never done that. That's a good one. That's quite a big it's one. Good trash. But yeah. if you've got any of these, like we're talking about, Tawi. Tawi is the only way is Essex, by the way. That's why it's coming up in conversation. Um, the if you've got these weird little local ones that I would probably wouldn't understand any references mm. from and stuff like that. That's that's Your what I'm into. So send them over. Give, give a comment. Yeah. <laughs> well, continuing in uh, in your taste, Joe. Uh, Malice <laughs> asks, uh, touching on the music while painting topic. What are your favorite songs currently to listen to while painting? And what can't you listen to while painting? I think you want specific songs, Ooh. maybe some specific artists. Um, this, yeah, this is, mm. a bit of a diff- this is a bit of a difficult one because it changes so much. Mm. But at the moment, I prefer something a little bit more chilled, I would say. If I'm if I'm going to be painting, mm-hmm. you don't want to be um, head banging because you can't see what you're painting. Yeah, you sometimes it, I've said before it depends it depends what mood I'm in. I don't mm. think my choice in what I'm putting on necessarily comes down to like oh I'm going to paint now, so I'll put my painting playlist on. Do you know what I mean? Long. It's more just like oh, what do I fancy listening to? That's funny because mm. I only the heaviest music I listen to is one I need to be productive. There must be something wrong with me because like my favorite music is not the heaviest stuff, mm. but it, when I'm being productive, like I love, for example, I love Billie Eilish, right? Yeah. Banging tunes. If I put Billie Eilish on while I was painting, I'd want to tear off my own face. Like the vibes <laughs> don't match. I don't know why. That is a good point. I've never put Billie Eilish on. I'm a big mm. Billie Eilish fan as well. I, I've never put Billie Eilish on while I'm painting. I'll get that. But when I'm saying chilled, I don't necessarily mean in that way. I'm still talking about... Um, You're trying to toe the line. More, more ambient, like if it, it may be like post-rock type vibe or uh, like shoegaze stuff. So, Do you know a band called Astronoid? Never listened to Astronauts, no. That's like, that's like heavy ambient. Thing. My big thing at the moment that I've been nonstop listening to, um, I went to a festival a little while, mm. uh, a couple of weeks ago, and saw a band called Nothing. Uh-huh. Um, been aware and listened to Nothing for a while. I've seen them live a few times before, but for whatever reason, this time I was like, oh, I need to listen to them again all the time. And they've been very good for... for it's still impactful because it's a full band it's guitars and everything but it's quite droney it's quite yeah. ambient it's quite nice so nice. um yeah that's mm. been my my go-to at the minute my favorite recommendation from you was knocked loose that's the best that's the band that's hit uh hit the closest yeah record. knocked yeah. loose is uh, <laughs> knocked loose is like a uh a hundred percent record of a recommendation like everyone who if everyone they, that you like recommend he- them to <laughs> they like heavy if they like heavy music like they're quite quite big now, not loose yeah. in their own right. But uh, Paul, have you got any like no, bands that you I, like painting or anything? I, I don't know. I sort of I'm still sort of living in the in the nineties, I suppose, when it comes to music. <laughs> time stopped for you. Yeah, time stopped there. <laughs> That's <laughs> good though. Nineties so, is a good. I, mean, is when, a good era. For I used music. to listen to everything in the nineties, from ABBA to like Rage Against the Machine and everything in between. So. That is kind of in line with us just literally discussing yeah. that we listen to Billy Eilish yeah. and yeah. Not Lips. But uh, I, I don't really tend to listen to music when I'm painting because if I start bobbing my head, I can. But I, I'm nearly a hundred, so I can barely see anyway. <laughs> so when, once my head starts going all over the place, when I'm trying to paint my eyelids, no good. Uh, also, I like to listen to music that makes me cry when I paint. I think paint mixing my paint with my own tears is uh, <laughs> quite cool. But generally, I don't really tend to listen to music when I when I paint. Oh, I just can't do it. Just can't. What is your go-to while you're painting? It's probably been discussed already. But... Well, I think we touched on it last time I was on, I think. You're an but, iPad kid, aren't you? I, yeah, I get the iPad on in, in the corner and uh, just put some comedy on or a TV show or something like, like that. In the, yeah, yeah. Is it like the TV show you've seen a million times? Of course it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Always. If you enjoy listening to these podcast episodes every single week, I'd like to ask that you could please do us one small, tiny favor in return and hit that subscribe button on YouTube or the follow button on your podcast app. It takes only two seconds and it really, really helps us out and it allows us to bring you these episodes for free every single week. Thank you so much. Back to the episode. Okay, topic for this week is going to be miniature painting stuff, Mm. products, techniques that we don't get the fuss about. Now, this one came from one of our Discord community members, actually. So thank you very much, Carl LM. Uh, He says, is there any hobby tools or techniques that have left you wondering what is all the fuss about? And he gives his example as pigment powders. And I echo with that. That's actually number one on my list is pigment powders. Mm -hmm. I can get, I get that, yeah. I 
had a phase where I used pigment powders quite a lot, but they're not for us. They're quite like controversial, like in the office in particular, because I didn't have a, I didn't have a particular like distaste for, for them starting here. And then everyone has pointed out to me like loads of reasons why they're terrible. I just explain, <laughs> I just explain the main reason. Mm. So we tend to not use them on commissions. And even if a client asks for them, I will tend to go back in an email and just say, by the way, we'd really rather not use these because of this reason. And the main reason is if you're going to be transporting and shipping the models, even if you've sealed the pigment powder in <laughs> as best as possible, yeah. it will likely go all over the place if, in the package. It's not it just shipping, like, it's the just putting them in a case, like just ha transporting tra them transporting amongst yourself. Transporting in, any in way. general yeah. then. But that, I mean, specifically shipping is the main reason because we obviously have to ship in and out models all the time. So we try and avoid that as much as possible. Um, and I also feel like what I'm probably going to get onto when I give my one for this is it's not like it's the only way to get that effect anyway. So whatever you're asking for them for, we can probably emulate in another way anyway. Yeah. So you can get the same look without the hassle. There's a, I don't, I, I kind of disagree that you can get like the exact same look. That's kind of why they're still like borderline for me because something about them is still hard to emulate. I think it's just because mm. of like- Because it's the dusty look. Yeah, it's, it's difficult like said, to recreate. They're not for us. They're for the scale model people. They're not <laughs> supposed to be for the games workshoppers and the Warhammer. Maybe this is why the scale models people don't like We've us. taken their pigment powders and their enamel. We've right? taken their, their pigment oils. powders and then we're talking about how much we don't <laughs> like them. I think, um, I think part of like where the fuss about them comes from mm. is actually echoing back to that episode from a few weeks ago about the grimdark thing, is I feel like there's something that's maybe overused quite a lot. It's kind of like, I, I see it a lot of times where I feel like the person did it for the sake of ticking a box, not necessarily because it was like the correct choice, if that makes sense. So for example, you often mm. see, what I'll often see is like someone stood on like a big piece of rock and then they'll have a load of like contrasting color pigment on their legs. And I think like aesthetically, like that looks nice. The colors complement each other. It gives yeah. you like, you know, the worn in uh, weathered vibe, but then you just draw back to the, I don't want to say realism because obviously it's all made up, but like something about it makes me think like, well, they're not in a desert environment. So why? And he's stood on a rock. Yeah. So why has he got like orange dust all over him? Yeah. But I guess there's like, he could have, you didn't see where he was two hours ago. Yeah. I guess so. Right? So it's like, he's playing you can make up any of his mates. You make up any of these stories. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I've used, I've used them a lot in the past. Mm -hmm. I don't like judge anyone for using them. I've seen them used very, very effectively, but I'm at the point now where like every time I've used them, I've regretted it because like we say about transporting around, I feel like even like just picking up a model, like you drop it off the model holder and then all of a sudden there's like a load of pigment dust on my desk or <laughs> it gets on their legs and elsewhere on the model. You know what I mean? Yeah. It goes everywhere. Yeah. I, I've never really experimented with it, to be honest. It just seemed like I just wanted like one less thing to have yeah. to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it is as well? It's like, um, you know how if you use basing material and you don't paint it, Say you wanted them to be on a sandy beach and yeah. you used real sand and you put it on the base yeah. and everything's to scale and it looks nice. But for some reason, it looks mental because the sand isn't painted and you put a painted model on it. You can still notice the difference. Mm. It's kind of doing a similar thing for me with the pigment powders. Right. It's like I'm looking at a painted model and then that's stuff, stuff that isn't paint. Stuff that isn't paint. On yeah. It. yeah. It kind of is doing a similar thing to me of like if you'd put, you know, like when people use like a tree bark and stuff. Yeah. And, or like the, the little cutout lead and like stuff isn't painted. And it's put on it. Yeah, it looks. It just looks a bit off. To LED me. Yeah. lights. When people put like LED lights yeah. on their rhinos and yeah. stuff. I've dabbled with that myself. Yeah. Have you actually? Yeah, yeah. I've done a dreadnought. Um, this is like when I was first getting into the hobby because mm. I've always loved like tinkering around like electronics and stuff. And uh, I had a redemptive dreadnought, and I like drilled it all out and like under the sarcophagus and all the little, you know, all the little lights like to the side of the head and stuff. Mm. I drilled all of them out and put LEDs in. Do you know what? The, I've always felt like what you. I've always agreed with what you're saying. Basically, is that it? Like it just throws me off a little bit when there's something that could be paint that isn't paint yeah <laughs> and like like i'm saying like the led lights thing i think is a bit of an extreme thing where people just do it for the sake of doing it yeah well that's another part of a hobby different, it's different a different hobby, hobby. Yeah, like yeah. it's yes. like it's yeah. like oh this would be fun to do yeah. more than like oh this is going to look better than if i yeah. painted it so it's gone a bit of a tangent have you seen the rc yes. stuff people do where they yeah. Like, land raiders they, and yeah things. where they get a land raider and they've got like a remote control yeah brilliant so it's, it's, it's very yeah. it's very good yeah. ingenuity it's, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's wild so but it because of that thought process that I've always had, there has been 
there, there was something that was discussed on the last episode that like kind of opened my mind a little bit mm. that with Rich. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I never, I never put the same thought process in place when thinking about this exact thing, but it is kind of the same thing, which is mm. where he was talking about non-metallic metal and metallic paints and stuff like that, where he was saying that it was odd to him that like, you needed a shiny paint to to be the metal where like everything else is just you're not using like a different material paint for all the other materials yeah. not, you're, not yeah. using, you're not using skin yeah. to paint the it's, skin it's <laughs> all just, yeah 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 that was the actual <laughs> quote wasn't it um so like why do you need a metallic paint to paint the metals kind of thing and i was like oh yeah it does kind of make sense yeah. like it, it's like it's, it's a similar thing telling everybody to get good like yeah that. yeah it's like the similar thing where i'm saying like Oh, there's something that isn't paint that should be paint. It's the same pro. It's the same thought process. There's, a, isn't it? there's like, a lot of hypocrisy to my own argument that I'll point out as well. For yeah. example, tufts I'm fine with, but they're not painted. Yeah, do you paint? Because people yeah. paint their tufts sometimes. I, I've painted tufts before, not because I, I like the look them. of them painted, but because I needed them a different color. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't have the ones I yeah. wanted. Yeah. So it's not. I'll, I'll I'll say it here. I'll say it now. It's not a great argument, but for some reason I just don't. I what don't about them. if you were doing like snow basin? Do you do you prop fully paint? Snow's really hard because there's there's a lot of really good snow products, most of which will poison you to death, and they for some reason never put that on the bottle. But <laughs> it's a hard one to get right. I think it's very very hard. I think melting snow often looks better than like full Actual, snow. Like snow. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think well the melting snow thing, like the the GW one looks yeah. fine for that. I think just because yeah. like if you if you did like a solid like deep snow, but it was just covered. Like it's so glaringly white and bright, and like you kind of have to paint yeah. it to get some, I don't know, blues in there or something. I guess. Well, you often see people doing that. I suppose I put like mm, blue tones tone it it down. It, but yeah, that's my first one. Mm. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess I kind of, I kind of agree with the sentiment, and I also agree with the hypocrisy yeah. because I like. Oh, you, like you well. say, yeah. like you say, Joe, do this purely on vibes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not a rational argument. It's not a perfect argument, but I don't know. Yeah. I've used them a lot. I've stopped using them. Not yeah. my thing. Yeah. No, we, well, we have had them before. I mean, we've uh, had miniatures come into us that have got pigment powder on because obviously they're wrapped in bubble wrap. It's like those short, uh, those salt and shake crisps. You know, you put the salt <laughs> in the bag and you shake it. <laughs> By the time you've un- I've unwrapped the miniature, the whole thing's covered in pigment. You get pigment powder on your hands, so you can't touch anything else because then you, what you're doing is moving it from one I hear, I always hear people saying, oh, use varnish. Two things. One, instantly <laughs> kills the pigment effect. So, brilliant. What was the point in that? Secondly, it doesn't work <laughs> because it's you not always stuck miss down. It. Like there's no good way to stick pigment down in the first place. So it's like, you know, when you paint on peeling paint on a wall, Yeah. it's like, well, the surface under it isn't stuck. It doesn't it matter. It just crumbles off. Yeah. It's not great stuff. I don't like it. If you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. Jai, what's your first one on the list? This might be this might be a bit of a controversial one and I'm not, again, similar mm. with the pigment powder stuff, I'm not talking... I'm not trying to talk smack on this. <laughs> I just don't understand it personally. Yeah. Oh, what's right. the fuss about? Yeah, yeah so. what's what's the fuss about? Um, the oils, like oil washes, pin shades, where people like fully gloss something and then they love the idea that they can just put mm. like a dab of an oil paint in the recess and, and, it, and it fills it all. Yeah. And it We've all seen all, the Instagram reels. It yeah, just yeah. magically flows. It, it zooms yeah. all around it. Or even worse to me or the idea of it is even worse to me where you like fully wash it and then start dabbing it off with like oh like with the q-tip, Q-tip, Q-tip yeah. Yeah. or cotton bud or something it's just confusing to me like i don't <laughs> understand why like again like i've said earlier you could do uh, even if you disagree with the pigment powder thing 
to a certain extent, you can get the same effect just with paint. Mm -hmm. Like you don't even need to use for recess shades. We've spoken about it before. You don't even mm -hmm. need to use washes. You just thin down paint. Yeah, and you can recess shade with it. And it just I, I, don't, I never I don't, use washes to recess shade a model almost ever. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't. Have you dabbled with the oils I've, thing? I've not used oils purely because of all the thinners and stuff like puts me off. And I'm very mm. like, um, I'm someone who's maybe a bit overly cautious with like chemicals and stuff when it comes to painting. Like I'm a big advocate of respirator and, you know, with filters for your airbrush yeah. and stuff. But um, so that's always put me off. I know there's odorless and whatever, but it's a different conversation. Um, I have done the gloss varnish to do your shading thing. And I found that... That wasn't specifically my issue. No, no, no. Mm, I, but... I, I totally understand that. But it, I have done the gloss varnish and then doing a wash over because it does flow a lot a lot better. And the reason I found that so irritating was the step of doing the gloss varnish on the model, which takes a lot of time. You've got to do a couple of coats of it so yeah. it covers nicely. And I'm getting the airbrush out and I'm doing all the spray and putting everything back away. You've got to wait for the varnish to dry properly. And then you do all your pin shading and stuff. It's like, now I've got a matte varnish the whole model. Because when you go to do your edge highlights, they rub off. Like yeah. nothing wants to stick off. Yeah. That. Also, so I've wasted so much time varnishing. I wish I'd just neatly shaded the model in the first. Yeah, the place. thing I didn't like about that is like any mistakes or anything, any tidy ups that you do then have to do because the model is so glossy. Yeah, you can tidy up with the same paint, but it's going to look different. It yeah. might settle back to match when you varnish at the end. Yeah. But for that moment, it looks like horrendous. But you're adding, you're adding risk because varnishes can have problems. So you're, you're yeah. increasing the risk there because you're, you've basically got a model that you've primed, undercoated, gloss varnished, and then varnished at the end. So that's four stages of like layers of paint that aren't actually your paint that you've put on the model. And you could mitigate two yeah. of those steps. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You ever had any experience with oils and stuff? Well, it's, I used to paint miniatures totally in oils. This is going back... A long time ago, when my, my dad used to paint like 90 millimeter figures, big metal figures, just using oil paints, but more in the way of like you would paint an oil painting. Yeah. Where, you know, you'd put the base colors on, put a little dab of lighter color on, and then blend that in perfectly, and then leave it for four days to dry. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and then I did a little bit, I used to sort of paint more with enamels and do like in that thin enamels for doing the sort of. Mm pin washes and things like that more than oils. I don't think I would, I don't think I've, I haven't got the patience to mess around with oils and things anymore. I, yeah. I, just, I think I'm there's not, just a, there's a large area of like potential mistake. As I, well. I, but I, I realize these, it's like everything else, isn't it? Things come into fashion and become a bit of a, like a fad. And then a couple of months later, it'll be something else and no one will be doing pin washes anymore. So do you know what's uh just to jump onto the next one? Do you know what's a fad that I like really fell for? Mm. Was the the ultra matte varnish that like felt like everyone was using for like a period of time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny the ultra matte because like you do, so you've got like a space marine cloak, or, like a big flat surface, and you've done like a really nice blend mm. on it. And you add the ultra matte varnish and the blends just like magically look like amazing. You're like, this is right. the best. Is I should use this for everything. Yeah. And then you start using it for everything and you realize over time that oh, all my metallics look really dull now and my cloth doesn't really look like cloth anymore. Everything looks like, even though I've painted it to be like all pristine and nice silk, it's like really dull. Yeah. It just sucks the life out of everything. Colors look so much more mute, especially black. All of your black all of a sudden looks gray. But like it's such a, it's an easy trap to fall into, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I did, I got some, but that was, that was my first experience of even bothering to varnish a model. Like yeah. That was quite early right. on. So I was like, Oh, this varnish thing. Like, oh, everyone keeps, better do it. Everyone keeps banging on about this one. Yeah. So yeah, and I found the same thing. Like over time I've I've come to prefer a more satin overall. Cause it's like it, it sort of levels out an mm. okay thing of on all of it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the map, the ultra map might look your robes look in, uh, might make your robes look incredible. Yeah. But then it you suffer elsewhere. Whereas the satin yeah. you're like hmm. and even if um because I slowly came to this realization and I thought, oh, I'll just do the ultra matte on the cloth. And then you've got like a nice contrast of texture, which I think does work contextually, but mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily work for everything and every single painting style. Like I said, if you've got a pristine, lovely, fresh, new, silky cloth, it yeah. looks really, really dull. And especially looks even more dull because you've got it next to a satin finish. So I've just started just using yeah. satin for pretty much everything. Else. I know we've, we've gone off 
on from the oils a little bit from this. But I do. I am. I know. I know for a fact we're going to get comments from people who live and die by oil <laughs> pin shades and stuff. I do genuinely want to hear from them. And like, what does that give you? That what what are you getting from that that you are, wouldn't get from just doing? Are this? they just better for vehicles? Do you think that pin washing type thing to get around panels? The big one is like towel. People use them on towel yeah. all the time because of the really deep re- recesses. But like, what I want to know what what you're getting from that that you wouldn't get from mm. just filling down paint and yeah. doing a. I always shape. the argument I always hear is speed, but I feel like there's just so much faff surrounding. This is what it I'm saying. It's yeah. like not accounted for because like the actual shading of it, like 100 mm. understands faster. But it's everything else. But it's everything else around it for me, personally. Yeah. Is it just because like, it just flows better into these weird recesses and things? I th- well, that's why people like it. I know, but like you were saying, the difference between why use that over so- when you could just use something else that's... I think because yeah. people see it as um, you're reducing risk of like spill because you're yeah. not actually putting the paint around there yourself. Is it like staining and stuff they think they're getting I away from? I've, 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 I'd rather maybe. just tidy up the stains though if it's stained. Well, like, like you, I want to hear from people because the only argument I've ever heard for sp- is for speed and right. it's not an argument that I've been able to actually validate. So I'm, I'm being genuinely inquisitive. George is being aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just confused. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what's, uh, what's on your list? Uh, well, I've actually brought it in. It's this... Useless. Was oh, that a mold line removal? <laughs> this, this useless piece of metal that uh, I was forced into buying from. I've never oh, you bought seen, one. I've I've, never, I didn't know you could mine. buy them. That's, I thought that they just like came with stuff. I think these are. Is this an official GW? Product? Yes. Yeah, this is an official GW product. The mold line remover. I didn't know that they sold I, it because I've I've I got think, a couple and I think they came with like sets and stuff. I didn't know you could actually get. Them. So could, the the thing with these, I've never used these or seen one in person. Yeah, don't bother. Um, this. <laughs> There's two things about this. This does come down to the blunt versus sharp yeah. argument that you and James had a little while ago. Because obviously this is blunt. Yeah. Um, and we all saw what a fool James made himself with that argument. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but His blunt scalpel. I think, in my opinion, I imagine the purpose of this particular thing yeah. is to make people it's a bit more children. okay to give it to their children yeah. to yeah. do their models. If they... Are watching a YouTube tutorial and they see their favorite YouTuber removing mold lines and they might yeah. start doing that. This is probably the best option to give your kid. But in terms of actual practicality, yeah. um, how, how have you found it? Uh, shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I've used it about two or three times where I thought, well, I, I'll give it a chance. But you, I sh- you just struggle to get it into places and then to get like the edge. It's so at an angle. It's so large. Describe- I don't even think it's the blunt. It's so large. Like there's not a point to it. There's no. not a sharp point to it. And it's a very thick piece of metal. That compared to a, a nice sharp scalpel, that can just go in the bin throughout right the window. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. <laughs> Scrap I, metal. Yeah, it's just a, a, don't waste your money on it. It is literally a fad. Just because some YouTuber says, "Oh, this is brilliant," or you've seen it somewhere, don't, don't, just don't. <laughs> you I tell you what, the cost of that, you could probably buy two or three good scalpel sets for the cost. I don't think yeah. people, re- I buy um, Swan Morton scalpel blades in a box of a hundred and they're like a tenner. They're so cheap. Like if you're buying hobby knife blades, like from the hobby shop, like stop, yeah. they're so expensive. You can literally buy like, I, I get through them like there's no tomorrow. Like, cause I've got an endless supply. They're like yeah. basically free. Yeah. That's, I mean, you can get these attached to like uh, little plastic handles on the, GW website. Yeah. They're quite, I mean, I wouldn't spend any more money on these. Do you know what the funny thing is? If I was listening to a podcast and someone had such a negative review of a product, mm. I would probably go out and buy it. <laughs> just to say, yeah. just to, just to In see. the hopes that they would be wrong. And then <laughs> you get it see. and you go, oh. <laughs> oh just to see. Just like to it, see. If it, if it needs, I, I need to experience whether, but I so suppose it's, sales it, of these things may go up. It may, Briefly. Yeah, We're going to look at the GW, going to be looking at the uh, By the tens analytics. of people. Yeah. Yeah. Tens. tens dozen. Just, dozen of people. <laughs> we sold four this week. Yes. 100% higher sales than Sales have gone up 400%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that no, is, to be fair, that is a thing that um, I've never really seen many people talk about. I only yeah. ever saw it mentioned in. I mean, that could be made into quite uh, two or three scalpel blades. That metal in like the Warhammer, yeah, Duncan era tutorial videos is the only time I think I've ever yeah seen those mentioned. Even no, nope. um, yeah, I think uh, I think people sort of know they're a bit of a meme now at this point, don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I can that, see falling for it if you're a newer painter, especially like if you're a newer painter. Um, especially if you're an adult and you go to the GW store and you're like, oh, I'm looking to yeah. like, get started. 
they're obviously going to sell you that and you're going to be that's like, get you. you're not going to know any better. That's how yeah, they get you. I think, well, for me, because I was like, when I was getting back into it um, and I was being quite stingy as well. Mm. So like, I, I, I just Frugal. I just landed on not cleaning my mould <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, if I if I've got to spend, I'm just going to punch them straight off the sprue. If I've got to spend 15 quid on that, then I'll I'll live with the mold lines kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah. then I I guess I'm going off of memories from like years ago now. But I think potentially even in the tutorial videos, they may have mentioned that you could use a hobby knife as well. Or yeah. Something like that. I don't think they were fully. You've, you you must only use this, use this. <laughs> otherwise you will damage the model. Kind yeah, of thing. I don't think they were like that. But okay. No, well, uh, terrible. Moving on. I'm going to make the most of James not being here with my next one on the list. This is one that I really don't get. Mm. Old paint, retro paint. Old paint. Stop kidding yourselves. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> it's terrible. It's insanely expensive. Oh, yeah, it's a true. risk to buy mm -hmm. and it's bad. I've used plenty of it. Fortunately, we have James around. There's a near bottomless supply of the stuff. He made me use it for the Viathan project. <laughs> he, he made it was me. Hell. He made me. He made me use I didn't it. Get, I didn't get a look in. We was, he was like, we're doing purple. We're using leash purple. And I'm like, um, oh, okay, I guess we use leash, leash purple. No, it's, it's awful. It literally made that project so much harder than it needed to be. Old paint is terrible. Stop buying old retro paint. It's bad. I have to say, coming from the 90s, where this was the only paints we had, I'm glad we have the paints we have now. I... Even when the, the paints were fresh back then, you know, just straight in the pot, they were, I always found them incredibly difficult to work with. Maybe it was because I was about, you know, sort of 15, 16, and <laughs> just, you know, getting into it. But I, I always thought they were pretty rubbish, especially like the red, the yellow. The yellow. Yeah, you hear that? The red. The old red <laughs> is the old, rubbish. And the old yellow, you had to put, you just had to sort of teaspoon some out to put, put it on the shoulder pad. <laughs> and then that was your shoulder pad painted because it just it was rubbish it didn't work very some, well some of the colours are very very vibrant like yeah. I, I will admit like Goblin James green. if you're listening blood red I understand it's very mm -hmm. very vibrant Ooh, right I don't care the paint is so bad to work with it's and you terrible. haven't got like you can't just there's also James is talking about how oh when he goes and does his army, he'll buy like 10 of the same paint because like, what if they change the formula or whatever? You can't do that with the retro stuff. Like <laughs> you once you run out, James. well, you can if you're James because you own most of the global supply, but yeah. it, like because it's so inaccessible and it's so expensive, some of them especially, I think if you're into it for like collecting because it's a rare this thing, is, this mm. is the thing, totally get it. Like that's a different thing. But if, you, if you've seen like someone on the internet, like, oh, they're using this old retro paint and you're like, oh my God, I need that to paint like them. It's it's actually awful. The paint is so terrible. To I I think I can feel the trauma from yeah. the whole, from the whole Claude project coming out. I think the majority of people that are buying it are buying it for collecting reasons yeah. and nostalgia, and they and not, they enjoy they that side of it. Paint with it yeah. And then the people like James, like James who also then try and back up how good the paint is. Yeah. I think are probably just trying to justify their spending on, <laughs> on their they're collection. They're justifying why they bought Which, ten. Do you know what? Of the same. Thing. I'm fully behind. <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna go all in on kidding yourself about how good this paint it's is, it's actually quite fun to watch him squirm. And I, I, I'm, all I'm all in. I'm all in. That's fine. That's fine yeah. with me. Um, but yeah, as long as. The, the saying that though, I don't think I've ever felt the need to go and buy old paint based no. off of someone else's recommendation. Do you know what I mean? Like, I always just think, yeah. to me, it just always seems like a bad idea. Like, there's new paint. Yeah, I'll buy the new paint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> paint. Like, just buy something that's newish. Yeah. Newish. And not poisonous. Yeah. Prob probably. Having said that, yeah. If they're, so, we again, did eat an awful lot of it back in the days, you know, the brush in the mouth and stuff. Yeah. Shifting, shifting time scout a little bit. Well, because we've spoke before about how I have the nostalgia for what I feel is the the little spoke about <laughs> era yeah, yeah. of Warhammer, which is the early two thousands. That's oh, when right. I found out what Warhammer was. Nobody did it then, and it was like no one, no one is nostalgic for that. Yeah, no one's no one's reason. nostalgic for like the old Citadel label. Yeah, like or, or like whatever. So uh, the the pots, the paint pots that I remember, are the ones with the black lid, mm, so yeah, the yeah. clear plastic with black lid. But yeah. the pots were the same pots as now. Those ones, do you mean? No, no. Oh, no, you mean the ones step, the, for, step further back than the that. This is what I mean. No one. <laughs> because, the reason that no is one, that because, no one talks about it. Are you talking about like when the washes that stink? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I'm this is what yeah. I was going to yeah. get at. So, um, 
there i found an old chaos black in the in the garage from when i was a kid right um and opening that pot up and smelling that paint mm. not only nearly made me collapse <laughs> <laughs> But I think back. it made me collapse in equal amounts of toxicity and nostalgia. Yeah. <laughs> so I do a lethal get, combination. I do get that side of it. Like the nostalgia is great. It was. But, it's funny that because I remember. Um, but I wouldn't go out buy that paint to use it because it's better than insane. Yeah. 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 I do actually remember James got one of those paints that you were talking about. Actually, the mm. washers in particular, and I smelled it, and I, I it's like a smell that I didn't remember that I smelled. There was like mm -hmm. something. Oh, you was right. It was very nostalgic. So it's yeah. a lot because I, I painted in that era as a child. Yeah, um, and then I was still a child, by the way. I wasn't well, like didn't have a beard or anything. Yet. <laughs> no, I picture you as one of those people Bearded that was in child. like year eleven with like a full beard. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, not too far off. I didn't have a full beard. The sideburns were coming through, but nice. uh, but we had second edition in the nineties. I suppose that's why more people. Are nostalgic for that time period. I guess, yeah. It's funny. It's funny to me that we're going completely off topic, but I, yeah, it, it's funny that second edition is the nostalgic one. That's right. Yeah. Why not first? Yeah. There's no yeah. one who's like fourth edition. That was yeah. my time. That's yeah. the one that I think fourth edition is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Which is, I would say, fourth. Fourth is the one that should you should be. It should be old enough for you to be nostalgic about now. I think it's the only one that is officially old enough to be nostalgic about that no mm. one is nostalgic about. If you go fifth, <laughs> sixth, seventh, they're too new at the moment. Anyway. They don't exist really. Do yeah, they? they're too it's new at the time. moment to be mm. nostalgic. Fourth is officially old enough, in my opinion, to yeah. be nostalgic about. It's the only one you know that what, people aren't nostalgic about. You know what this is exactly yeah. like? This is exactly like that argument. It's like, um, do you remember that thing? I think you pointed this out before. It's like when GTA Vice City came out, the 80s was as long ago as between now and when that game came out. Yeah. This yeah. is like that sort of thing. It's yeah. like no one thinks of the noughties as like retro. Mm. Yeah. But when you was in when you was in when the you was in the noughties, you thought of the eighties as yeah, retro. Yeah. Like it's been the same amount of time. Yeah. Mm. Very bizarre. Yeah. Wild. So I'm I'm just yeah, I'm patiently waiting. I'm happy to lead the uprising of nostalgia <laughs> for fourth edition. <laughs> You're starting a movement. Mm. I think I'm starting a movement. Yeah. 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 Maybe I'll have to paint some there, but there might be many for that movement, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, that's the, that's a good part of it. It's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> And um, all everyone's and trying to get rid of their full position stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any closing products? Um, well, I've got, I have got another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, those uh, water pots that are basically a toilet. It's got, like, you know, like a little. <laughs> it's got a little reservoir of water, and it's got like a little flash button. Do you know the, the ones I, do, I mean? I do know that. I, just, yeah, I do know the ones I mean. I just call them toilet now. It's just it's, it works exactly the same way as a toilet does. So is this you, is you, this you another case? You put your business in one end, and then you press the button, and it flushes away. Your <laughs> business. What, and then I just thought, what is um, the point of those? Is this another thing of like people sitting around the table and going, "We need to come up with something." There. We need to advance on a jam jar. That's what someone thought, and thought that would be a good this idea. This is like this is like when TikTok jars. gets like carried away yeah. with something and makes it out to be like the best thing ever. Mm. It's just. Absolutely. Have you seen anyone actually using these though? I have. I have. Un unfortunately. Mm. Yeah. I mean, no offense to those people. Well, but... own up in the comments. I want to know, <laughs> I don't know what's anyone going on. Anyone uses the, the painting toilet. Yeah. It's just a it's case of, yeah, I think it is, it is definitely uh, kind of rounding out the whole topic of this thing. It is definitely like a trap you can fall into. Uh, that's it? definitely, that screams to me hobby trap. That is a solution a looking for a problem. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly that. Like there's so many non-problems that have solutions in this hobby. It's, the problem it's is that you might have 20 or 30 quid in your wallet that they want so they come yeah, up with this they have a solution for it yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they think that you absolutely need otherwise your painting will be rubbish it makes, it makes me think of um, like a hamster water bottle like the upside down it thing is, that's with the yeah, little that's all yeah. it is yeah. it's the same thing I'm just imagining like your brush is like <laughs> <laughs> when you flush the dirty bit away and you get another thimble full of water in it it's so daft just get two or three jam jars yeah cost you like three quid for a three Jars of jam. And you get jam. And you get three, you get like a month supply of jam, depending on how quickly yeah, you eat jam. Yeah, you're the only per George is the only person, because when Paul says, oh, buy jam jars, mm. I think buy empty jam jars. That's what I think. You're the only one who I've ever heard, like your main thing is like buy the actual food, eat the food, yeah. then wash they it do, out, They then do that with it. the jam. I know for a fact that they do that with the jam. 
James does that with the bomber mom. Paul does that with the bomber mom. Well, well, I've never well, had a bomber bomber bomb. <laughs> James, we know James doesn't use a bomber mom anymore. Actually, oh, he uses the fish bowl. Yeah. The fish Actually, bar. he, James, if you're watching this, obviously, James, uh, you owe me a jar of bomber 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 bomber. <laughs> you said you was going to give me a jar. You haven't yet. No, my my go to is the Dorito salsa jar because I love yes. salsa and they're the no, perfect size. Uh, what I was getting at was yeah, because my bomber mom was was previously. <laughs> I did have jam in it, yeah. but I didn't buy it to think, I'm, oh, I'll eat this jam and then I can use the thing. No, like, this, this is the thing with me. Very conveniently, I'm someone who happens to eat a lot of salsa anyway, and I'll start pre-planning. Yeah. I'm like, you know what, this water pot's on its way out. It is time for some tortilla chips, to be fair. I love that you've worked your salsa addiction into your Warhammer addiction. I think and it's very good. It's very, very productive. I think, well, maybe that jar might come in handy one day. So I put that <laughs> oh, in the yeah. cupboard. Do you do that at boxes? Whenever I get a box for something, like, I'm like, oh, that's a nice box. I'll keep that. I what am I going to use the box for? I used to. I used to. And then I, I had a realisation that I was just holding too much yeah. useless stuff. Yeah. So. I need to knock that on the head, I think. Yeah. 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 Same with the jars, though. Everyone's got the cupboard of, uh, do you, have, you know those, um, those desserts boxes. you get that come in the little ramekin? We've all got a cupboard full of them, surely. No, you've, you've, you've discussed the this. <laughs> That's, uh, I think that's a very British thing to hoard them. Everyone's got them in the I've cupboard. Two, I'm convinced. Got a couple of those. Yeah, see? Yeah. See? I had some souffles this one that. time. And I thought, oh, I might be able to use those little dishes. Because you finish your dessert and you're like, that's a, that's a good job. I'll throw I that away. This. I could use this for all this stuff. And then yeah. it'll sit in the cupboard and you never use it. But you might do one day. That's the thing. I think I'm just too... I, I wish... I think I've just got too much other stuff on my mind. I'm just like, I'll get rid of this what, jar. What, you're going to throw away a perfectly good jar? Yeah, I'll just get rid of this jar. I mean, I can't it can be think recycled, sure. Can I, can't, I can't think about this. I need it gone. <laughs> <laughs> just can't run up my life. We frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world-class and award-winning artists. Teaching is something that all of the team here at Siege are very passionate about, and we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Seed Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalog of over 300 step-by-step -step tutorials covering a huge variety of color schemes, miniatures, painting styles, and techniques from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy to follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you wanna take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios question of the week time thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week if you have a question that you would like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast please leave it in the comments down below on youtube this week return of a fan favorite it's grimdark mark he's back he's back uh grimdark mark says what advice would you give to someone who has a very small hobby space but an impulsive paint buying disorder to keep things organized <laughs> and also actually i saw a few people on the discord were talking about this recently about uh Maybe some like hacks for smaller painting setups. And I thought this was a good episode for it because James isn't here. Yeah. And we all have quite modest painting setups, I believe. I was going to say, if it's based on painting storage, surely James is a good one. Or well, paint storage. Well, they've got a small area James and has James has got an a facility. Yeah. <laughs> James has to look at storage because of so many, all the paint he's got. Whereas the average person probably yeah. got, what, 100 pots maybe? I, I guess so. It always seems Inch. like less than it is. I, I always feel like I don't have that many paints. If I counted it, it's probably maybe. more than it seems. But uh, do you know what my hack for this is? I recently went, uh, I've run out of desk. I've got quite a small desk. It's only a meter wide. And I have like a little rack of paint on my desk. And then obviously I have more paint than that. So I need to put it somewhere. Uh, I've got draw unit like to the side of me, which is like got organizers in it for said paint. And then a new thing that I've started doing, I've started taking to the walls. I've got them, um, you can buy these acrylic shelves for nail varnish paints and they're super cheap. And command strips, you know, the like removable nail list sort of hanging solution. For pictures. Use a few of them. They're mm. actually pretty heavy duty and paints don't actually weigh that much. You can't really fit enough of them on one of those racks. So I've just got command strips on the wall and I've got like eight of these shelves. So I've got paint to my side, Paint on my desk and then paint above it on the back That's wall. That's not bad idea. So, I this is the exact thing that I'm looking at at the minute because I I've just moved, so I'm setting up the paint station mm. once again in a different area. So, and one of the things that I can't do is because I'm renting, so mm -hmm. I can't I can't like be 
doing a lot of DIY, drilling into the walls, all this sort of thing. I can to a certain extent, but um, because I was looking at those and I was like, oh, I don't have to drill them in the wall, whatever. Um, so I might have to look into the the command. I I didn't even think about that. You know know what? I'm calling it now. I'm doubling up. This is my hobby hack for the week. Use command (laughs) strips to hang up your uh, your baby shelves. I assumed personally that they wouldn't be able to hold the weight. I thought that as well. So if you get the, they have several sizes. If you get the large ones, they're like this sort of size. Hmm. Two of them, put them horizontally, one on either side. Perfectly fine. My I've, got, I've actually even got some, one shelf with like, not just like dropper bottles. I've got one with like my varnish, like some other random products. I've got like the bigger, hmm. um, like, you know, like a Vallejo full size, like airbrush thinner and all that stuff. Hmm. Even them fall, it can hold the weight of all of them. And I've had those shelves up for like a year and a half and none of them fallen down. So Can you just like, put the command strips on the wall and just put the pots of paint straight just on Just on the command strips. <laughs> does that, does that, I mean, I've, done, I've not used those kind of strips. Yeah, so, so basically it's like a, imagine like, it's almost like Velcro. Mm, um, right, just a little gotcha. tiny little strip and it's yeah, made for yeah. people who like rent and you don't want to put yeah. a hole in your wall so you basically you stick it on the wall you stick the other side on your shelf right you wait like a few hours just for it to like firm up before you put, put any weight on it and you literally just line it up on the wall and you just push right. it and it just sticks so you and then when it comes keep putting paint pots on no, no 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 oh. but when it comes time to take unless it, you put little velcro the other little end <laughs> if you cut those into separate little sections and put them on each individual paint pot then you could just put it back on the wall but yeah. uh yeah, you can just stick your paint shelf on the wall. And then when it comes to removing them, like if you're moving out of your place, whatever, the command strips are basically made so that they don't ruin off. the paint. You just, um, there's like a little tab and you pull it slowly and it just, oh, just comes so straight I might off. have to think about that because I've only got a very small setup. I think it's I think it's just under a meter. So I think, I think I've got like um, one of these sort of craft mats on it. And then that's basically all, I, <laughs> all I've got. So all my paints are in like these little Tupperware boxes mm. that I thought, oh, that would come in useful one day. So I've got all these like little Tupperware boxes that has like little pull out drawers for things. But obviously as my hobby is slowly expanding, no matter how hard I mm. resist the urge, they might be, I was thinking of perhaps getting a bigger desk, but I might be able to take, get away take with to the just, walls. Take just, to the walls. They're coming out of the goddamn wall. <laughs> <laughs> up on the walls. Yeah, I might have to. I'll have a look at that today. Yeah, what a what a hobby hack that is. Yeah. That's fantastic. Because the other the other thing I was looking at trying, I didn't know how well this was going to work before I thought of the before you suggested the command strip thing was with those things. I've got one of those big Kallax yep. things. So I was going to do that's, them, that's the IKEA cube, that's the IKEA right? cube uh, kind system. Of, thing. Yeah, yep. bookshelf thing. It's quite tall. It's like four tall. Yep. And I was going to do them all down the side of that. Right, Ooh, nice. so that I could actually drill them in. Yeah, no. Yeah, command but, strips. Um, promise you. Yeah. yeah, it seemed like when I done it first, I thought like this ain't gonna hold. I was like, I'll test it, and it didn't mm. fall down the next morning. I was like, ah, I'm gonna commit. And then they've been up, they've been up the whole time, never fallen off. That's well, not a bad idea. We'll nice. give them a go. Yeah, yeah. get uh, just acrylic shelves. Uh, they're they're usually branded for nail varnish. If you look for like the miniature painted ones, you're probably gonna pay a bit of a premium. Just off Amazon, I got like a pack of six. Yeah. They're like twenty. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll try it. So grim dark mark, hold your horses. Yeah, <laughs> steady there. I'm gonna verify. I'll, I'll try it and I'll well, let grim, you know. Grim dark mark will have seen on the screen throughout this episode pictures of my setup, and he'll see that it's perfectly valid. Um, mm. Well, that could be Photoshop or AI <laughs> yeah. or something. I want to, <laughs> Mister Editor. I will do the inspecting. Grim dark mark, yeah. you know, I'd never leave you, lead you astray. So <laughs> I'll, I'll do the the official test, and I'll let you know how yeah. it goes. Nice, good idea. Okay. Well, on that note, thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. If you'd like to support the show, the best way you can do so is on our Patreon. If you head to the link in this episode's description, you'll find a link and you can support us over there. And we very, very much appreciate it. You'll get access to a load of amazing rewards. We have a podcast here and we have our regular tier, which gives you access to all of our PDF tutorials. Uh, Some great stuff over there. Thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode and we'll see you next week. 